Rosa Almenar is a member of the ITU Secretary General's Youth Advisory Board and from ITU, I'm Monica Gehner. This is another episode with a woman in tech who broke gender barriers. Rosa, it's great to have you here at the ITU TV studio. Thank you for having me. Yesterday and today, uh, ITU convened for the first time a space sustainability forum uh, here in Geneva. And I assisted a little bit and I saw really the who's who in the space and satellite industry, governments, uh, space and telecom operators, regulators and other stakeholders who are committed to the responsible use of space. And you are one of the speakers. You addressed this uh, distinguished audience yesterday. So how did you feel about this? Well, actually, I was very pleased to receive the kind invitation by the convener of the forum, Mr. Tsikorosi, because I think it's very important to have some young representatives in some of the panels. And that, of course, uh, goes in line with uh, the ITU vision at the moment. And well, being, being here representing the ITU, Madam Secretary General's Youth Advisory Board, is such an honor for me. And being able to express our views and concerns for space sustainability more. more. Can you give us a bit more uh, insights into hopes or concerns or your vision you shared with the audience? Yes, basically I shared three key messages from the Youth Advisory Board on how we would like space activities, how we consider space activities should be. First of all, we consider space activities should be inclusive. So we advocate for an inclusive outer space wherein more opportunities are created in terms of transfer of knowledge, um, the creation of um, capacity building initiatives, because that could really benefit developing countries, least developed countries, landlocked countries, etc. So we really believe in that vision where there is outer space for everyone and where these less developed, less favored countries can develop their own space capabilities in the same terms as uh, space faring nations. Secondly, we also advocate for a space activities that are solidary because the space sustainability is all about solidarity with young generations, intergenerational solidarity. So that's why at the beginning I mentioned that I was very happy to be here representing the youth since that is a huge move and especially if coming from ITU it's very important to have representatives of the younger generations to provide our perspectives because this is a topic that affects us and present generation should show solidarity with future generations because it is also important that we enjoy the outer space environment as much as they do at the moment and lastly, of course, space activities should be sustainable, secure and prosperous. And it is very important to adopt a sustainable approach to orbit management, because otherwise space operations will no longer be possible. And that would be a shame. Thank you. Uh, so you were uh, you bring your intergenerational or youth perspective uh, to this audience and uh, uh, you were selected among over 100 uh, applicants uh, for one of the 12 positions in the ITU Secretary General's Youth Advisory Board. Um, and that's not only because you're young, you bring some expertise uh, to this distinguished, again, uh, board. So how did you feel when you were selected and what do you bring to the board? I was surprised. I didn't expect it, um, but I was very honored to be able to provide practical advice to Madam Secretary General. My expertise focus on AI and space and also how AI technology sh can be leveraged for a space. So I think that is what maybe distinguishes me from other candidates. And I just feel very humbled to visit along, to sit along um, very esteemed professionals like my colleagues and to be able to bring this youth message from ITU to the world. If you would summarize uh, your young career so far, what would be the milestones? I started, I am actually a researcher at the University of Valencia in Spain. I am pursuing my PhD and uh, I started researching at a very young age. When I was 19, I wrote my first paper on cyber violence against women and girls. So that made me 
feel inclined to the topic of tech law and how um, I could address vulnerabilities and try to bridge the digital divide. Um, since that moment, I continued researching, which led me um, to a space, space technologies, which are, of course, very important as well for, for digital development. And from one thing to another, I joined several organizations, met wonderful people, um, embarked in very interesting projects. For instance, I'm a member of the Space Generation Advisory Board, where we conduct a lot of research on space land policy and we also issue policy positions, um, official policy positions from SJC. And well, I think it was just a journey that uh, ended up here. And for that, I'm very grateful. You mentioned the uh, digital divide and there are many divides. I mean, the biggest one is 2.6 billion people are not using the Internet for various reasons, infrastructure, capacity, access, uh, cost, affordability or, or skills. Uh, but then there are also divides between rural and, uh, and urban and women and men. So where did you grow up that you have this inclination towards uh, um, you mentioned it also in the space mm -hmm. industry um, uh, towards closing divides. And what role did your family and your community play uh, in your career path? I grew up in my country in Spain, uh, concretely in Valencia, and I always felt close to the law discipline because my mother also studied law and I was looked up to her. Mm -hmm. So since I was a little child, she showed me the importance of having um, good regulation of how the law permeates the whole society. So that's basically why I decided to study law. And then during my law degree, I just felt that there were so many inequalities, so many vulnerabilities that I wanted to also contribute to bridging that. and. I love researching, that is my passion. So um, the best option for me was just to try through my knowledge and through my research to contribute and help uh, in bridging those digital divides, especially um, when I wrote my first paper it was during COVID time. Mm -hmm. And that of course exacerbated a lot, the digital divide. And that also made me realize how important it was. So I think this background is what made me choose this path. So research is your passion. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, how do you see your career playing out in the future? I would love to stay in academia. It is my passion and I would love to be a professor, to teach the younger generations and continue my research. But life uh, takes you to places you are unable to think at the moment. So, of course, I would love to continue collaborating with international organizations like ITU, some others of the UN system. Um, I think where my expertise is needed, I will be there if I am asked to. So. You mentioned that um, you would like to teach uh, younger people, so that's about your expertise, mm -hmm. uh, technical expertise, I would assume. But what other advice, what advice, life advice would you like to give uh, to young people and women in particular to, uh, to work in technology and decision making research? Uh, um, what advice would you give uh, having in your, with your mm -hmm. uh, young, um, still young experience? What advice would you give? to educate themselves. I think education is a driver of change and to have a solid foundation of knowledge will always take you um, to places. So to educate themselves, to always update themselves on new technological advances, because that is not just once in your life you pursue a degree and that's all and you know everything. No, that's not true. You have to educate yourself every day. I do that. Um, and then, of course, not letting anybody tell you what you are capable or not of doing because you are the only person who knows your limits and your aspirations and it is good to share them and to be ambitious. Thank you. That's good advice. Um, so I wish you all the best in your career. As Thank you said, you. we don't know what life brings and tech is evolving fast. We always have to stay on top of things, but I wish you the best in your future career. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here.